Oh, th thanks for watching State and Local. Again, I'm Anne Marie Battistone, and this is Norfolk Public Access. Um, I have the second in a series of interviews of candidates for town offices. And today I have with me Patrick Tuohy, who is running for uh, a seat on the Norfolk, uh, uh, Norfolk School Committee, King Philip. King Philip, thank you so much for, thanks thank for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, what it, why should, let's just go, what, why, why do you think people should, should vote for you? Because you're, you're not, there's an incumbent and then you're a challenger. Why? Well, I mean, I, I, I might bring an interesting perspective to the, uh, the school committee. Uh, as far as I can see, the school committee, at least publicly, does not have a large knowledge of how Common Core is created and how it affects the curriculum and how testing is aligned to that. Um, they, they, it was just kind of brought in through the Department of Education back in 2010 and they just signed on to it with, with the money that came from Race to the Top. And they went forth with it and as um, tensions have bubbled up over the past couple of years about the assignments a lot of the kids are getting nowadays, Common Core has come front and center. And um, I decided to make my run for school committee. And I mean, Common Core is going to affect a lot of things. It's going to affect uh, the budget because uh, right now the budget is tight as it is. A a as we know, monies for schools and any other, ma uh, any other effort in town is tight and it has to be tightly watched and the selectmen I think do a good job with that. But as time goes on with the, with the new standards and the technology that's associated with them, budgets are gonna be a big thing because um, right now we got money from Race to the Top to enact this but right now the people of Norfolk and the other three towns within the, within the region are going to be on the hook for additional monies for technology and um, upgrades because right now the technology upgrades, um, at least in a, in a surrounding town, the superintendent and one of our uh, neighbor towns here did a cost analysis just based on the addition of the new curriculum and the new standards that are going to cost a town and he came up with an additional $1 million just in, just in technology alone. Oh. This, this, this coming this coming year. Oh, because they want everything to be done on the on online. Internet. Yeah. So all the infrastructure in the background will have to be updated, or there's going to be continued problems. Like right now, there was that they had uh, technical issues when they were doing the park test in KP Middle this year, with you know not being able to sign on and a lot of things locking up. My my, my daughter who did not take the test, but she was she talked to a lot of the pe a lot of the, her peers in the class and they said there was all sorts of glitches. So there's gonna, there's gonna need to be a lot of technology upgrade in, 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 the, um, in the foundation of the, of the infrastructure and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be continuous. It's what about materials? And materials as well. Now materials is a kind of a scary thing in, in, in my, my view since I've been looking at this for almost three years now. I'm amazed at how fast the publishing companies um, came out with all these common core aligned materials and then I wonder who's verifying these and who's certifying this common core material because I, I, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, s there's a lot of spelling areas in the books, there's a lot of uh, inappropriate material in the books so depending on grade, there's a lot of questionable stuff, um, I, 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 there's a lot of things in the materials that are being put out that I don't think is being inspected or verified by the teachers and or the people who are putting out the Common Core standards. Oh, I agree because I, I was looking at something myself and the wording was very strange. It was a very odd, very awkward sentence. Yeah. You, thought, you know, now what, but what, what would be some of your other concerns? I know that you, you know, when you taught, when you were at the um, candidates night. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're not a, this is not your only interest. No, I mean, I, I, mean, what, I, I, would, I would imagine, I mean, this, this, now this applies to everything within the schools. I mean, I'm sure there's a little part of the school committee that I might not be aware of. Okay, I've, I've attended the school committee meetings and there's a lot of minutiae that goes on in the school committees with, you know, building maintenance, um, uh, d d classes doing certain things that the school committee has to approve for, field trips, whatnot, trips to Europe and other things like that. And I'll get into that and I'll, I, I will, I'll be a policy wonk when it comes to that. But right now, I mean, this a new initiative that has been thwarted on us uh, <laughs> with the, by 2010 is going to affect a, a lot of things going forward and I think uh, it's I think it's going to bring this uh, it's going to bring the schools down I think teachers are going to be paying the brunt of it and I don't think that I don't think their voices are being heard and I think we need as, as a school committee member I would want to bring the teachers into the school committee meetings and say how do you feel about this curriculum how do, how, how do you think it's going to affect your teaching ability in the future have, have you seen it read or anything or heard anything about you know, people that were ready to give their jobs up I've over this? I, I, I read 
and I think I, I sent this out to you. I, I read a, um, a teacher from Weymouth who submitted his resignation. Experienced teacher, on, uh, also, an, uh, also a, uh, a war vet from the, the early Iraq War. And he just said he, he cannot serve two masters. He cannot serve the students and the parents, and he cannot serve the administrators and the, the, the curriculum makers. And he was very troubled by the, what he has to do on a daily basis and j just to account for his time and account for everything that's being asked of him on an administrative basis. And he's not, an, he's not able to devote enough time to teaching the students individually who need, might need help. Or on a class size, and having a good discussion because he g they have to go through their script, then they have to write down what they taught, and they have to write, I mean, not write it down, they actually no. input it into, into a system, oh into a database. God. So, I, I mean, <laughs> a lot of teachers in this state and country and nationwide are, are giving up this profession because it's becoming, they're not teaching anymore, they're becoming facilitators. I mean, th they're, they're giving a right. script and they're, they're told to take the script and give it to your students and don't ask questions. Well, I mean, th there's a lot of, teachers out there fearing if they come out and speak against this their job is going to be in jeopardy oh yeah well what what will happen is they'll get a they'll get a bad recommendation yes and then they'll say well you know I won't give this recommendation to you if you leave that's what they do yeah I, I, and that's I, going on for I mean th this this particular resignation I mean after he submitted his resignation to the administrators and I, and I believe he copied the, 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 the teacher body on that three days before his final day they escorted him out of the building I mean, without no notice or anything like, like that, so you know that his students were able to. If he's a terrorist say of some kind. Yeah, and the students weren't able to say goodbye to him, or he wasn't able to finish up on a few. This things. is in Weymouth. This is in Weymouth. Now let me ask you something. So, so uh, King Philip does not have it. The the, the I mean, the, there's nothing in the uh, King in the high school. No, okay, well, C Common Core is throughout the school system. King Philip High you, is using the MCAS for their. Oh, that's the difference. Yeah, the, the MCAS is the oh, only mandated oh, oh, thing oh. that the uh, the state mandates the schools do is the uh, graduation oh. requirement. Everything else is suggested by the DESC, Department so of Elementary and Secondary uh, 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 Education. Excuse me. Right now, if the Norfolk and King Philip School Committee has decided, well, we don't want to use Common Core anymore, they could take a vote and they could they could they could pull it out and th they could replace it with the standards we had before or any other standards they see fit or no standards at all for that matter. It, they can do that. They have the autonomy to do that now. Whether they know that or not, I don't think so because, I, as I mentioned in candidate to uh, Mike G, you guys have the autonomy to do that. And he goes, I don't think we do. And I got from legal counsel on Wednesday at Common Core Day on Beacon Hill that. The, the only mandate that the state puts on the schools is the graduation requirement. Now, why don't you talk? Didn't you? Weren't you going to put a uh, some sort of a ballot question a, a, about that on? And it, 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 it did not go through. No, I I, you, I submitted a, about that. I was going to I, I was going to submit a ballot question to direct the state, DESC, to revert back to the pre common core standards. Based on the votes of he, of this town, what but we would it want. Was, them it would be to a non binding uh -huh. message. A couple of towns, two experience has done this: Lakeville, Wilbraham, a couple, uh, four or five other towns either have it on their ballot this year or have had it and it successfully passed. Uh, I would have needed to get 10% of the signatures in the town, which I failed to do. I, 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 I do work uh, a lot. Yeah, I, 700? I, I didn't have a lot of help going out getting, it would have been at least 700 signatures. Uh, mm -hmm. I did not do that, so I asked the, uh, the selectmen if they would allow me to come in and present to them where I could bypass that uh, process where they would vote on it directly. Oh. And I did make my presentation. Um, <coughs> and the, it feels as though they didn't have enough information to take the vote, so they invited the superintendents from King Philip and Norfolk to come in. And they came in this, uh, the very next uh, selectman meeting and made their presentation. And based on that, and the fact that I did not get the signatures from 10% of the voters, mm -hmm. the selectmen feel as though that the, uh, the electorate in Norfolk didn't have enough information to, uh, to cast an educated vote on it, so they decided to not take a vote on it at all. That being said, on the town meeting on May 12th, I do have an article on the town warrant, which basically states the same thing to revert back to the pre common core standards, but this non-binding question is directed towards the King Philip School Committee and the Norfolk School Committee. Oh. So that this would be local. So that is on the town hmm. uh, warrant right now for town meetings. So that still can, that is going forward. Now what did you have to do to get that warrant? Uh, uh, just to get uh, the required number of signatures. 
which I, which I was able which to I do. Which I imagine was considerably less. Oh, it was very considerably less. Yeah. So I was able to do, and I submitted the language, and it is, it is on the town warrant. I just don't know what it, at, what port, port, uh, at what time that was going to be coming up during the town meeting, because as we know, the town well. meeting attendance is kind of low unless it's a specialized item, and people show up for that, vote on it, and leave, which, I mean, I go to the town meetings, and I see that happening a lot. Uh, so hopefully uh, it's early in the evening on Tuesday, and uh, if, if it runs into Wednesday, or hopefully it's early in the evening on Wednesday, so I can get enough people to get in there and vote on it. Uh, I will be publicizing it. I'll make some signs and try to make people aware that that is happening. The North Fork Rentham local paper has wrote an, uh, put an article in their past March edition uh, about, that, about those two items. And they said they're going to repeat it again in the May, in the May edition as well. Oh, great. Oh, that's good. And also, <coughs> I believe Sun Chronicle might be writing something on it as well. They had called me over the weekend. So well, they'd probably not be supportive. If from what I know of, of they the, might the, the and they positions. might not. I mean, if, as long as they, I, I really don't care if um, um, a news agency is supportive or not. Their job is to print every, uh, to report on everything. Right, they right, should, right, they right, should, right, right. If they want to do something on editorial page, fine. But it, as an article, they should be printing information no matter which way they, do, uh, which way the editorial board supports it or not. So I, I'm not. I don't know if Sun Chronicle is going to do anything about that, but I know the Norfolk L Rentham local paper is going to do something. Uh, I, I have started a Facebook page um, on Facebook, Norfolk, uh, Norfolk Mass Parents Concerned with Common Core. It does have a few members. Uh, hopefully, not a lot of people contribute. I seem to be the main contributor, but a lot of people do read them. I hope people get more educated on the creation, implementation, of Common Core because that's what really troubles me most is how fast it was created, how fast it was implemented, and how fast the publishing companies uh, um, conformed with their with their material. It was so. F I, I, I mean, I've never seen anything happen so fast in my life. I mean, uh, the, our Massachusetts standards went through two to three years of input from parents, teachers, and uh, college professors and colleges, and s before they actually started writing the standards. And then after they wrote the standards, they still went through debate and open input oh, yes. yep, yep. And before they started implementing. And then when they implemented them, they implemented them bing bang. They did it at a small approach until they were fully implemented in 2000. And then the MCAS came along in 2001 as a graduation requirement, and that was part of uh, No Child Left Behind. So I mean, that took almost 10 years to get get through, and then we started seeing the results of all those in the subsequent years of 2005, 7, 9, and 13 in the NEAP, the nation's report card test, and we were, we were the nation's best. Oh, okay. And the, I mean, so and, and, and the creators of Common Core based, they're going to create the standards based on the success of the Massachusetts standards, which we know that th they, they use very little of the Massachusetts standards in the, in the creation of Common Core standards. Now, I suppose in a, in a state where, where the standards weren't very high and uh, things were not going very well, um, could, could you think Common Core could be a, a step up for them? It could be. It, it, it might well it could be, but uh, the other troubling portion of the Common Core in the... If you're talking about Mississippi, Alabama, yeah, and, these and, places... And, and, it, <laughs> and it could be. I mean, I would rather see them take the Massachusetts standards, make them their own, and incorporate those. But another troubling thing about Common Core and the associated park test in this state and the SBAC and other states is they're private copywritten. They're not owned by the, the, the public entities that are enacting them. I mean, like right now, Massachusetts Frameworks is owned by Massachusetts. So the publicly and the debated and the MCAS and the and the MCAS, you can do a, huh. you, can, you can do a freedom of so information request on the creation and uh, every every step of that you can get information on that. You can't do a freedom of information request on the Common Core standards because they're privately owned. Okay, uh, they're owned by the National Governors Association and, and the, the the chief chief. And I always forget this acronym what it means, but it's the, the Superintendents Association basically of the country, and they're both private lobby organizations based in Washington, and they own the standards, and they own the the, the, yep. the park test and the SBAC, and the people who write these are not public. The, the, the is that to keep? Not, is that so? It won't be public, or is there some uh, earning involved in that? Is there some? I do. Um, I do not know what the reasons are for not making them owned by public, and but I would imagine it's. I do. I, I can't even speculate on that, but uh, they are privately owned and copywritten, and they're not subject to public review. So, and there's no mechanism right now in place to take public re uh, take input from teachers and/or parents and update them on it either the yearly, bi-yearly, or tri-yearly basis. There's no mechanism in place for that right now. 
So it, it, a lot, and like I said, and the, a lot of the associated material that coming from the publishing companies, there's no review process for that. There's no certification for that. So I don't know who's looking at these materials before they come out and the schools buy them. Now, where did you read that, that there, was no, there was no verification process on that, that there was no review? How do, <coughs> I've, how do you know? I, I, it's on the Achieve website, for one thing, but you try to do a Freedom of Information Act on the standards themselves, you can't do it because oh. they're private. So, I mean, I, right now, there's, there's, there's no input for improvement on these standards. I mean, if you look at, uh, if, you, if you watch anything, David yes. Coleman, who is the said ar uh, author of the Common Core Standards, it's, and he is quoted as saying this, that the teachers will teach to the test. There's no force on earth that will stop that, unquote. So if somebody was to depart from the, from the program with some other enrichment or what have you? Well, see, the, the test, well, the, the test, the park test right now in Massachusetts tests on ELA and math based on the Common Core standards. They allow states to teach 15% above that, okay? But the test does not test on that 15%. So it, it, there's only so much time in a school day. So when they're, when they're teaching to the test, there's, there's not, they can't really much focus on anything extracurriculatory that will right. allow for that if they're not going to be taught on it. And then those teachers' evaluations are not going to be evaluated on it. Oh, right. So, I mean, common sense dictates and says, well, if, I, if I'm only allowed this much time in a day and I have to teach to this much on the test, that means this much to teach to other things, where do you think their time is going to be spent? And it, that's what's happening. I, I know Norfolk and King Philip are doing their best effort to teach above and beyond what the test requires, but that's going to go down expeditiously in the future. And as teachers, especially older teachers, experienced teachers, are leaving the profession, and these newer teachers are coming oh. in with no experience, they're, they're going to become facilitators. And they want the, the newer teachers because they're cheaper. They're cheaper, uh, and they'll and do and what they're, they're told. Exactly. And they'll do what they're told. That's exactly and right. And I think the school <laughs> committee should be bringing in the teachers to get their to get their uh, their estimation and their opinion of what these standards are without fear of retribution. Now, is that something if you were elected that you might try to establish? Oh yes. Not, like, would you would you think of it like as a as a periodic uh, I I would type of thing or a, a, a optional? Uh, no, I would I would like to bring them in as an open forum and bring parents in as well. Not not part of the school committee meetings, but maybe a school committee sponsored forum once every couple of years, even once a year, just to say. How are you liking these new standards? I need you to be honest and open. And at the same token, I, I would like to revise the school committee me meeting rules. Because uh, right now, if you go to a school committee meeting, they have public comment. You've got three minutes, and you, there's, there's no. Per person. Per person, and there's no, uh, th no two-way with the school committee. You, you state your public comment, you sit that. down. And I think that is so wrong. I mean, on each issue that's on that agenda, I think there should be a section for public comment in debate on each issue and if the public wants to debate that. Right now it's pretty much we're going to bring this up, the school committee is going to vote on it and that's it. There's no, there's no c comment on the public. So this is another facet because I, I was a little bit surprised and I didn't know if you wanted to uh, walk back, walk it back that, that you had said you would uh, at the um, that uh, Wednesday night meeting that you would resign. If yes. I mean is just, is, was that just sort of an off the cuff? Uh, or was a little it, what, bit was off it? the cuff and, and, and uh, it, I might have been a, a little bit um, quick to say that, but at the same token, if the school committee had the ability to vote on Common Core, and they, and they decided to keep it, okay, full force, and I, at, at that point, I'm not sure what, my, what, what good I would do on that committee if, if I was going to be the lone wolf who had held out, mm -hmm. because if they decided to keep it in time, that committee is just going to be a rubber stamp for the, the state and the federal Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if they're going to control oh, the see. standards, they're going to control the testing, eventually they're going to control the budget. So, I mean, if they want to be an independent body that works for the people that vote for them, and I'm not able to do that, what good of me being on that school mm -hmm. committee? Okay, is, okay, I mean, yeah, fair enough, yeah. I mean, yeah. The school committee works for the public, not for the Department of Education or the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Or they the, or work the for the hall. public, and they don't work for the superintendent. The superintendent works for us. So if they just That's take right. if, if they just take their the superintendent's recommendations verbatim and sign off on them, what good is that body? 
I know, I mean, the superintendent probably said, you know, we should go with these common core standards that they said to be good and back in 2010 before any, anyone had a chance to look at them. But there are superintendents across this state and this country that are pushing back on it and saying, no, they're not right for our school, they're not right for our students, and our parents are finding they don't like them either, so we need to get rid of them. And they're going to cost the state and local municipalities a lot of money over time with constant technological upgrades and, you know, I mean, I'm I'm in I'm in the 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 the, the, the IT world, and things <laughs> do not stay the same. How long have you? By the way, how long have you lived in Norfolk? Pat? I've lived in Norfolk coming on 12 years now. All right, and and all of your kid, all of your children. I have one child. Through? She's in Norfolk currently right now. And the others are older. Oh, she's in KP currently. I should say. Okay. I have no other children. I only have one child. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, now. Oh, I lost my train of thought. I, I interrupted you, and then I, now I had something else on my mind to ask. These things happen. Oh, do, now, do you foresee that they'll expand that to other t other subjects like science and history? Well, that is the plan for what I say, that uh, science would be the next thing to go. They're calling it ne next generation, but it's basically by a chief corporation. They changed the name because Common Core has a toxic name. So they changed it to next generation science standards. Oh my God! You've seen that already, haven't you? I have not. Oh, you haven't. Well, I know. I, last the uh, school oh. committee I went to last year, one of the science teachers was presenting one of the next generation science packages that some of the companies are putting out right now. And then with the history. History, the uh, well, history has already been affected within the AP courses, especially for college. Um, David Coleman, who is the architect <laughs> of the Common Core Standards, has now moved on to the college boards. And he's already adjusted the AP standards uh, in, in, on, in, within them. The reading, the readings or, or the actual uh, test itself? Uh, the, tes uh, the test and the SATs will be affected, but the, the reading and the AP, is, uh, he's already adjusted the, the U.S. history, and uh, a lot of people are finding it very troubling because... He's a revisionist? Uh, it's a very re revisionist history. It's a pr 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 probably more based on Howard Zinn's uh, People's History of the World, uh, People's History of the United States, Re which, is a very, which is a very controversial book that a lot of high schools have taken out now. Re re refresh my memory. Who is he? Howard I Zinn was, yes. an, uh, was, a, was a, a professor. I believe he was at BU. And uh, he was a, an avowed self-admitted communist. And uh, a, a lot of the high schools in the 90s were using his book as a histo U.S. history book. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of people actually started reading it and um, started complaining about it. And then another book by Schweitzer, and I can't think of that, um, Peter Schweitzer, and another, I can't think of the other gentleman's name, who is an author, came out with The Patriot's History of the United States, which was a direct rebuttal to Howard Zinn's book. And that book is far more accurate and, and, and based on referenced items within the, uh, going back to the beginning of our country. And what's the name of, Z of Zinn's book? Howard Zinn's book is The People's History of the United States, oh. and the Schweitzer's book was The oh, Patriot's History of the United States. They're both very thick books, and they were required reading in high schools throughout the, uh, the 90s and early 2000s, and a lot of uh, high schools have taken them out of their curriculum standards now. Huh. Now, so I've, uh, now, when was that, when did that come out? I believe in the uh, mid-90s. Now, see, I never saw that. I never saw that in the in the Boston schools. Well, it was funny. I was talking. I, mean, I was. But talk I wasn't a history teacher. But I never saw it around. You, maybe Boston they must might use have excerpts. had excerpts. I bet they use excerpts and put them in the textbook. They they could have done that. I'm not I'm not familiar how they they taught that book. But it was funny. I was talking to a uh, a younger gentleman, a couple of months ago, and uh, it was during a trivia night <laughs> at oh. a local establishment, and um, he was <laughs> uh, uh, he he. <laughs> He was amazed that I was getting every history question right. I'm, I'm not a history, I'm a history buff because I started reading history in the 90s. And I, I, I found everything I could about, especially the early finding of our country. I read just about every uh, uh, biography on every popular president. Just uh, as many presidents as I could get, I, I, I read biographies, autobiographies, anything history. And a lot of the stuff that I wrote, that I read, and I try to get stuff that was written a long time ago. I didn't want to get mm -hmm. revisionist. So I, 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 I did a lot of reading then. And, and I asked him, I go, he asked me, he goes, how do you know so much about history? I go, because well, I do a lot of reading. He goes, well, that, you know, I took history in high school. I go, what book you study? And oh, he told me, People's History of the United States. I go, well, there you go. I had to show him that Howard Zinn was an about communist, and he taught a revisionist version of history. So, and, well, you know, and, and he was probably thir early 30s at the time, so he was in high school, late 90s. Well, you know, sadly, in the United States now, you do not have to be, say, a history major to, uh, you know, or a, a physician's assistant to know more a lot more than the average person 
if you just do some reading. Yeah, you just do. It, reading is beautiful. It, it, reading is fundamental. And depending and, on what you read, as you say. Yeah, and I, 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 I like to read in-depth in books, especially that are written a long time ago with, without any, you know, uh, tarnishment of um, political bias. It's now, you know, it, it, it's so frequent now in the books that you read nowadays. You get out wonder, well, wh what view is this guy coming from? Mm -hmm. So I like I, I like I like to try to read books that were authored before the progressive ever came in in the like the early 1900s. Well, doesn't Louis Farrakhan uh, assert that the Holocaust? I mean, it just there's blows a, oh your yeah, mind. I the know. Holocaust never happened. How in the world? You know, well, the, the, and there also there's also some there's also some from common core aligned public uh, common core aligned books right now that question the Holocaust. And there's a lot of I've seen a lot of examples of um, common core aligned workbooks that are very anti-Semitic. So, um, yes, huh. uh, so d d d there's some questionable things well. in, in the material itself. So I think the school committee as a whole should be looking at the material that's actually being brought into the schools, not as well as the teachers. Maybe the teachers should look at it. We should look at it with them and highlight what is proper, what is not proper, and maybe, you know, buy our books based on that. Right now, a lot of people buy their books on based with Texas buys because Texas and California, because those states are so large. I'm not, fi I'm not very happy with that model because who knows, you know, what their agenda is down there. I think we should be buying our books based on what our teachers need to teach instead of what one big state buys, okay? Now, when, before Common Core came out, we had our Massachusetts frameworks and they were revising U.S. history standards and they were just about to be rolled out in 2009 when they were scrapped for Common Core. Huh. So, and uh, Sandra Stosky was a, a part of that as well. And uh, th those history standards were going to be very research-based, and they were going to be as accurate as possible. And it, I feel as though kids nowadays do not have an accurate view of history. It, it, it saddens me that, I mean, it, it, they just don't have an accurate view of history. Well, the and lack of it, civics. It, well, and, the, and civics as well, and I the lack I mean of civics. I'm reading a book now, it's <laughs> called Bowling Alone. And it's by, uh, I, actually, it's in my car, <laughs> and it's about the decline of the American community and where it started. And they cite that lack of civics teaching in the right. late 70s and early 80s has contributed to a lack of involvement they in the community. They don't know how to participate. They, they don't know how. They don't have enough sense to call their rep. Well, they it, don't know how, you know, things well, that just go through. Well, just in civic <laughs> or organizations, or just in civic organizations right. such as like, the Lions, or right, right. get, get uh, the the the, uh, the V, uh, not the VA, but the, the Moose Lodge, the Masons, and NCL, yeah, or it, it just uh, any kind of civic organization that helps your community grow and get to get know your neighbor. Back, yeah, a lot of those things have disappeared or slowly disappearing. Uh, if you look at a lot of these organizations, their memberships are down expedi expeditiously oh, yes. since like the 1960s and early 70s, and through that era, I mean, it's just. It, it, the me generation it has. It was a really big thing years ago. It, really it, was. it, it was huge. I it mean, it, it, it really peaked in the 50s and, it's yep. it, and uh, it started to decline in the 60s and in the 70s. I mean, the, the, the World War II, the greatest generation, really really got that going. I mean, get get, get to know your neighbor. Yeah, and, and they came back. And nowadays it's just not the same. And it saddens me. I mean, I grew up in the city. I grew up in the city of Boston. And we knew our neighbors, although my parents weren't big civic participants. and. I don't know if that's uh, their fault or not, and so it didn't rub off on me. But when I moved to Norfolk, I got really, uh, really curious about it. I started, I started attending town meeting. I was very, very curious about town government, and at the time I was reading history, and I was reading a lot more civic stuff, so it got me really involved, at least in it, and I always questioned my neighbors, why don't you get involved? Ah, uh, you can't affect but anything. You can't plenty. affect change. They, they complain plenty. I go, well, if you... I, 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 I'm on the, if, if you want to complain, get up and do something about exactly. it. So I'm complained and I'm trying to do something about it. If people elect me, I'll, I'll try to serve you proudly. If you don't elect me, I still will be a voice in this town. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. I, that's I, a good, that kind of attitude is it. You know, we've got to stop because we've just got to, you know, so it, any, like in the last 30 seconds or so, anything else you might want to tell people or if you feel like you've made your... I think I felt, I think I'll have made my point. I, 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 I hopefully am making sense and I hopefully people are looking into their own research and finding the same things I'm finding. If they're finding something different and they're, they're pro Common Core, they're, they're pro the way things are going, please voice your opinion. Come to town meeting. Come to the school committee meetings. I also sit on the Conservation Commission, and I've learned a lot being on that, just being in part of town meetings. So right. 
I, I continue, I will continue to be uh, an active member in this community. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. And, and I, I, I thank you for having me oh, on. Oh, and Marie. thank you for coming. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. And so don't forget that would be May 5th, the town elections, and May 12th, the uh, town meeting. So if you've been watching Norfolk uh, Public Access, this is state and local. I'm Anne Marie Battistone.